beautiful evening. Certainly from up here it is. Oh, I suppose it's beautiful from down there, too, for most people. Certainly not the Brooke Wilkins of the world. Doesn't Brooke deserve a life like this as much as any of us? If she works for it and earns it. Why are you defending her? I'm just trying to be fair. Which isn't always easy where Brooke's concerned. It's almost impossible. I mean, if you think about it, the first time she came here, it was a caterer's helper. And within a couple of months, she had Ridge wrapped right around her little finger. And a couple of months later, she was moved in here. So, uh, Brooke... Doesn't deserve Ridge because of her social standing? No, I would never say anything like that. What I'm saying is that she could have, she should have given us a chance to get to know her. She didn't. This is my house. It's not Brooks. It's not even Ridge's. But she didn't acknowledge that fact. She moved in here as though she had a sacred right to do just that. Without so much as a word to me. You just don't do that sort of thing. At least not where I come from. It's bold and it's brazen. And it's disrespectful. So don't ask me to be fair to Brooke. She has never been fair to me. Or don't you agree? I, um... I can see your point. But Brooke is very impulsive and she doesn't think before she acts. That can alienate people. It certainly has alienated me. Well, maybe it'll alienate Ridge. And then we won't have to tolerate her for much longer. Well, uh, Eric and Thorne seem to tolerate her just fine. I think once Eric starts to spend some time with her, that'll change. Why do you think Thorne likes her? He thinks that she's good for Ridge. Why in the world would he think that? I don't know. I'm not sure. You have some idea, though. Yes, I do have some idea. But it has nothing to do with Miss Logan. You know what? Let's talk about something else. I've devoted enough of my evening to Brooke. Well, I better go upstairs. I have to make a phone call. Are you and Thorne going to be here for dinner tonight? Yes, I think we are. Oh, that's wonderful. Hello, darling. Hello. So what are you two cooking up? Well, I was just about to go upstairs. I'm on my way to the kitchen. Tell Maria to put two more on the grill. Dinner's in about an hour. Where's Ridge? Follow him? Yes, I do. I wanted to talk to you. About what? Us. You want to talk to me about us? What, about being friends? No, Stephanie. I've given up trying to be friends. Oh, well, that's refreshing. But I don't want to be your enemy. Peaceful coexistence. I'd settle for that. Oh, I bet you would. But you won't even give me that. I give you nothing. Nothing. You have taken too much already. Your son, his love, is that what you mean? No, that's not what I mean. But as long as you brought it up, we can talk about Rich. I understand that he's told you that he loves you. Who told you that? I wouldn't want it to get around either if I were you. It's a good laugh for all of us. Believe what you want. He meant it. 
Oh, honey, I think that love has clouded your vision. No, Stephanie. I can see very clearly right through you. Careful. That's on the borderline of disrespect. It frightens you, doesn't it, that Ridge might love me? Well, it should frighten you because he does. Now listen. No, you listen. I've taken all the abuse I can take from you, and I'll take no more. I've begged for your friendship. I've tried to embrace you. I've fretted, cried, and worried over this, and you'll have none of it. You won't even listen. Well, I have your son. And he does love me, Stephanie. And I love him. And together we're going to build a life. Now you can choose to be a part of it, or you can choose not to be. But we are going to be one. You going to marry him? I mean, that's what this is all about, isn't it? That's what the whole point is, marriage? Without that, what are you? A bimbo. So what are we talking about? Marriage? In time. And when do you think that'll be? In a month or two. Oh, I better run and grab a calendar and circle a date. So what are you, Miss High and Mighty? What do you have? Nothing. No claim, no promise, no ring. Just three little words. Words are cheap. You're living in a fool's paradise. You're sitting on the fault line waiting for the earthquake to hit. And when it does, won't you be in for a big surprise? 